Hi guys, James at Rampant Line Reviews again for you today with another beer review. For this one, we're going to continue on with my Korean mini-series that I've been doing for you. We're going to go back down to Busan for this one, and this was a beer that I really, really wanted to review for you, but it wasn't until I was just leaving Busan that I was actually able to find this one. So for this review, we're going to return to Wild Wave Brewing Company, and we're going to have a taste of their signature beer. So this one is the Sour Lime. It's a sour beer. They're describing it as a dry hop sour, coming in at 5.5. 5% EBV. You saw me review the only other beer that these guys bottle, which was the, um, was it the Surfing High? if I remember correctly, or Surfing Free it was called, but that was a really nice Kulsh coming in at 4.7% and I was really impressed with that one um, based on its kind of originality if you like. It was actually very, very close to the ones that you would find in Germany. So looking forward to trying this one. I did try the Yuja Sour in my um, bar visit video that I did at their Guangan location and that was really nice, so really looking forward to trying the original one, and as always, I hope you guys enjoy my take on this beer. So anyway, as is usual with my reviews, then I'll tell you a little bit about the brewery. If you want to get straight to the tasting, just fast forward. All the usual links are in the description below. That's the brewery website, the link to my other reviews that I've done from Wild Wave Brewing Company before. No doubt I'll add some more in the near future if I get back to Korea, which I'm sure I will because I liked it here. There's all the usual social media. If you want to see more beer reviews, do please consider subscribing to the channel. The whole channel, of course, has a geography based tagging system so you can go into the home page and search for beer based on country, city, state, county, prefetch or whatever it is you're interested in. Do check out the playlist of beers from different countries. There is one there for all the South Korean beers that I've reviewed for you. That's being added to whenever I get the opportunity and hopefully I can continue to add to it regularly. And as always, please do get in touch and let me know some of the other beers and breweries that you guys would like to see me review. It's always great to hear from you guys that are watching the videos at home. So anyway, on to my uh, brewery notes that I've got on my laptop here. So this brewery was founded back in 2015 by two friends, Changmin and Junpyo, and they're based in Busan in the very southeast corner of South Korea, right on the south coast, which is very, very pretty incidentally. It's a really good beer city and just a really nice place actually, Busan in my opinion. But Changmin apparently discovered craft beer in England when he was studying there and he returned to Korea with his English wife, initially working at a trading company though. In his spare time, he began to home brew with Junpyo and they tried to learn as much as they could about brewing sour beers and apparently the home brewing scene in Busan is particularly well known for this. So they entered home brewing competitions for a few years and they won prizes in the sour beer categories and this really prompted them to go for it and set up their own company and they're the first uh, sour beer brewery in South Korea and you know they're doing a pretty good job actually, they're building a very very good reputation for themselves. But the brewery soon found a strong following and in 2017 they were able to open up their own brewery with Tap Room in Songjon Station uh, just next to Heyondu Beach and they now have a second location down at Gwangan, which is where you saw me review um, those beers that I did for you, their little brewery, the, the little tap room actually. I might get back next time and have a look at their original location as well. But as of July 2019, these guys have produced 44 different types of beer and going forward they hope to add another bar in Seoul and they want to produce some more Korea specific sours that use uh, different Korean ingredients and stuff like that and Korean cocktails as well as inspiration. But yeah, that's all you really need to know about the brewery for just now so we can get rid of the uh, the brewery notes but this is a brewery that I really do recommend that you check out and um, you know I forget the name of it now but when I did my bar visit video these guys had a really beautiful beer that was very akin to, uh, to a Flanders Red it was it was called Red something I forget the name of it now but it was absolutely beautiful so if you're into your sour beers Wild Wave Brewing Company are one that I highly highly recommend that you check out and it's cool in the sense that they are real pioneers in Korea because you know most breweries would start out brewing IPAs and stouts and things like that sours you know they require a hell of a lot of investment to uh, to actually get going so any brewery that starts up with uh, with sour beers, you know they're kind of they're they're kind of against it actually. They're kind of going up the hill if you like. But these guys have survived and you know they're flourishing quite a lot now. They remind me a lot of Breakeria back home in uh, in Sweden. So yeah, the first Swedish sour brewery. I live very very close to them. But yeah, I'll just let you have a little quick look at the artwork of this one then before we open it up. But yeah, you can see really nicely presented this one. Quite different actually from the uh, the last the artwork on the last beer that I reviewed for you, but. Really nicely presented. It says on the side here, uh, Sour Lime is the flagship beer of Wild Wave. We use lactobacillus, which gives Sour Lime its unique refreshing taste and good balance with a fruity and floral hoppy character. And there you can see, there is 
the Wild Wave Brewing bottle cap on this one, which you saw last time. But yeah, um, nice looking beer this one, nicely presented. So let's get it out and we'll get on with the tasting. It tells you on the side here, 5.5% alcohol and uh, was it 20 IBUs. So I'm curious to see how this one turns out, but let's get it out and we will get on with the tasting then. Ooh, that looks good. Lots of smoke on the opening and we'll get it out and into the glass. I just hope it doesn't go too crazy. We'll just treat this one with a little bit of respect. Pour it slowly. You always have to do that with Belgian beers as well. Sometimes sour beers can be a little bit volatile when they're bottled, but I think we're going to be okay now. Incidentally, I did pick up, I picked up this beer in the Aki 2 tap. I didn't think I was going to be able to review this one for you, but luckily enough, when I visited Aki 2 and filmed my bar visit there, um, I managed to find this one, so I was really pleased with that. And that's one of the things actually, it's, it's a bit frustrating with the Korean beer scene at the moment because um, most breweries are just kind of either selling cans or takeaway bottles in the bar. Very few of them are actually bottling and distributing to bottle shops. There's actually a bit of a lack of bottle shops in uh, Korea at the moment. In Busan there wasn't really um, such a good bottle shop. I mean you've got Josie's beer shop, the Gyeong beer shop down on Jeju and then you've got um, Ruri Super here in Seoul actually, but they were moving at the time that I visited them so I wasn't able to film a video. So there's not many bottle shops here in Korea at all actually. But anyway, back onto the beer. So as you can see with this one, if I hold this up to the light, this one is a really nice bright yellow colour. You can see there's a good two fingers of a frothy, um, I would say creamy coloured head on this one, but you know this it is a sour beer so the heads on these beers can sometimes go a little bit crazy and I think this one might have been in the bottle a little bit longer. Um, but yeah, really nicely presented beer this one, or nice looking. Nothing surprised about this one in terms of uh, of its appearance. You will get a lot of sour beers that are this kind of bright golden yellow colour. It is quite hazy but I'm not sure how well that's going to show up on the camera. As I keep seeing in these videos that I'm filming in Asia, the difficult thing is getting good lighting in uh, Asian rooms because there's, you know, there's just not so much space. They don't get so much natural light and things in their rooms so we're always relying on uh, artificial light. But yeah, um, one or two big bubbles sticking towards the side of the glass and quite a few little ones just heading up towards the bottom of that head there but you know overall it looks pretty damn nice I have to say so let's take a look at the aroma and just see how we get on oh straight away you can smell the lactobacillus in there it jumps out at you you get that nice lemony sherbet type thing out of this beer straight away it's got that big sharp tartness in there which is uh which is great. Um, it, it jumps out at you. You know, it's, this one does. To me, this one smells really, really sharp, and I think it will have a, a, a crazy sour bite to it. This one, just going by the aroma. But yeah, that's a lovely um, aroma in there. When you sugar it up a little bit, you start to get an almost. Um, you start to get that white bready yeasty kind of quality coming out of the beer which is really nice. So it's got a little bit of biscuity sweetness as well, but white bread, a little touch of a wheaty note in there, and um, quite doughy, to be honest with you. There's a little bit of a, an almost peppery spice coming out of this beer too, but it does smell really, really quite nice, I have to say. Um, on the hoppy side of things, the, the, there is a bit of grassiness to the hops. Um, fruitiness. Yeah, I mean, it's got a little bit of a kind of mangoey, apricot kind of thing and there's some sort of peri apple esters coming out of this one too. Um, it's quite difficult to figure out what hop that they've put in this one. don't think it says on the back either, um, or if it does it's in Korean. Um, but yeah, the aroma that comes out of this one is, is really quite nice I have to say, so thumbs up to them. For, uh, for the aroma and the beer, it has everything you kind of expect. It wasn't quite as, it was saying it's dry hop sour, I mean, it's not quite as fruity and things as I was expecting. Um, I don't know what hop they would have used in this, I would suspect that it's maybe Citra or Simcoe, something like this. Um, probably because, I mean, this was one of their first beers and back in 2017, you know, maybe I would suspect it would be Citra or Simcoe, just going by the aroma. It's got a little bit of mango, a little bit of apricot, um, I, I don't know. I don't think it's, I think it is one of those two, Citra or Simcoe, I think they've dry hot this with. But yeah, it does smell nice, juicy, good bit of juicy fruit, nice bit of that lactobacillus sharpness in there, some grassy floral aromaticity. 
it has everything you'd expect of, uh, of a nice silver beer. So yeah, as I always say, take a little bit of time and enjoy the aroma of the beer before you get stuck into it. But let's have a taste and see how we get on. So this one is the Sir Lime, the signature beer of Wild Wave Brewing Company from Busan in, uh, in South Korea. Really looking forward to this one, so let's get stuck in. Slanja, Skull, Gombe. Oh yeah, that it has a really nice bitter bite to it in the beginning, but it just smooths out really, really quite nicely. I have to say, I enjoyed the uh, the yuja sour or yuzu. The Koreans call it yuja. The Japanese and I think nearly everybody else calls it um, yuzu. And um, it's it really is. It, it's very nice. This one, the yuja one, was really good, and to almost just taste the sort of original one um, I can see why this beer you know quickly became a hit it's a really nice sessionable um, sour beer and it, it has that kind of refreshing quality that you'd want from a from an Asian craft beer yeah that's good so as I always say with these sour beers take a little sip and let your mouth adjust to it before you start analysing it too much. So middle of your palate then, you can feel this nice smooth white bready quality, that just blankets the middle of your tongue. I wouldn't be surprised if there's a little bit of wheat malt in here because it is very very smooth. So you can get that right across the middle of your palate. If you go to the centre of your tongue, um, there is a little bit of a biscuity sweetness that comes out there the further you go into, uh, into the aftertaste. Yeah, I really like how um, how this goes together. It's it's a solid, solid beer. This one that's actually one of the nicest kind of more sessionable sour ales that I've come across in a wee while. And, and and to be honest with you, the quality of stuff that I get from Breakery it quite easily. I'm quite hard to impress when it comes to sour beers. Um, but you know, Wild Wave Brewing, I am very impressed with these guys. I mean, I forget what the uh, what it was called, but like I say, when I was in there, uh, if you check out my uh, bar visit video that I did for this brewery, they had a beautiful Flanders Radio type beer, and it was it was amazing. It's one of the best sour beers I've ever reviewed, um, and this is the the basic one, their first one that they did, and this is absolutely solid as well. I actually think, to be honest with you, I actually do prefer the original one of this too. The yuzu one, um, but this this works really quite nicely. Although it'd be interesting to see how the yuzu one behaved in the bottle. I think the bottle conditioning in this one is maybe just smoothing out, uh, smoothing out the malt base a little bit compared to what I remember of the the yuja sour. Hmm. But the malt base in this one and the way it balances with the carbonation and sour qualities of the beer is very very nice. So on the hoppy side of things then, back corners of the palate there is a little touch of it, there's a very light kind of almost slightly sweet earthiness in there. As you come further forward along the sides of your palate you can feel that smooth out. There's a little bit of floral aromaticity in the front corners of the tongue then round the very front curve of your palate you've just got a lighter more grassy side to the beer which is, is very nice as well. Um, behind the front curve of the palate of course that's where you get that nice um, oily fruity bubble where the where the juicy fruity esters start to come out of the beer. For me the sharpness of this one it just kind of comes in if you go just around the front curve of your tongue again the the sharpness from the sour side of this beer just comes in and washes over the middle of your tongue um, at the beginning of the beer. It's got quite a sharp impact this one but once your mouth adjusts to it the beer really becomes a lot more drinkable if that makes sense and the more that I drink of this the more the kind of biscuity flavours are coming out and the sweeter side of the beer is coming out too. But yeah, I do like how this one goes together. Fruity side of things then, you know, I'd say this one is a little bit, it does almost have a little bit of that kind of banana-y bubblegum quality that you'd expect of, say, like a Hefeweizen. and it does have a little bit of that, and I do suspect there is a bit of wheat malt in here. I think there is, there is almost a, a little touch of a Hefeweizen quality to this beer. You've got a little bit of an apricot note 
papaya. I don't know if I'd quite go as far as mangoes. I'd say apricots and papaya, and like I say, some of those banana bubble gummy flavours you'd expect of a Hefeweizen. It's got a little bit of that apple peri ester that you often get in this style as well. It's got a little bit of that sharp lemony note you'll get from the lactobacillus. So, I mean, overall, it's a really interesting beer, this one, and it's definitely one of the better sort of sour sessionable beers that I've come across. My only thing I would say to Wild Wave is that they need to get their beers kind of uh, out there a little bit more because this is absolutely solid and it's definitely worth checking out if you get the chance. Like I say, the problem with the South Korean craft beer scene is breweries just getting their beers out there. So, you know, big thumbs up to Wild Wave Brewing Company on this one. But in terms of the, the mouthfeel of this beer then, I would say that this beer is fairly light bodied. Carbonation is pretty smooth actually, in fairness in the beginning it comes across as quite prickly but it smooths out later on. Quite a wet mouth feel rather than anything else, it's not really got too much of an oily character. Malt base has a nice smoothness to it, little touch of sweetness later on as I said. Um, you know, hoppy bitterness, like it said on the bottle it's 20 IBUs, by no means is this beer going to blow your head off in terms of that. It's got an almost Hefeweizen like fruity quality to it um, but it's got a little bit of juiciness as well and just that little bit of sharp tart character that you'd expect of, uh, of a sour beer but um, overall like I say very very nice beer certainly wouldn't hesitate to drink it again I did enjoy the the Yuja Yuzu version of this um, but I do think I prefer the original to be quite honest with you but some of the barrel aging sours that the or barrel aged sours that this brewery are doing are absolutely top class so I do hope that I can try more of those in the future. And if you do go to either of their tap rooms, make sure you focus on the uh, the sour side of things. Their IPAs and their stouts and stuff are good, but you know if you can find some of the the heavier um, barrel aged sours, you you're really really going to enjoy those, especially if you like the right the likes of Duchess de Bourgogne and uh, Rodenbach and your other kit and uh, the lambic beers and stuff like that. You will really enjoy these. But let's leave it at that for this one. This one was the sirloin, a really nice. Um, a really nice, almost Hefeweizen like uh, sessionable sour beer from uh, Wild Wave Brewing Company in Busan. Really cool to review their signature beer and do a second review for them. And hopefully, they've got a few more cans and bottles and things like that the next time that I visit them. But let's leave it at that for just now. So, once again, thank you for watching my beer reviews. Until the next time, please like, subscribe, share, all the usual YouTube stuff. Let me know your own thoughts on this beer in the comments section below. Let me know what your favourite beers are from Wild Wave Brewing Company as well. And I will definitely be returning to Busan in the future to see how the craft beer scene's getting on there and if you do come to Korea make sure you check out uh, Busan because it's an awesome city and there's some really good craft beer there as well so thanks again for watching and I will catch you guys very soon the Sarlim uh, a nice sessionable sour beer from Wild Wave Brewing Company in Busan in South Korea until the next time it's land just now school gombe make sure you taste this beer cheers